Well, this has been an interesting conversation to say the least. Has it not, Alicia? <laughs> it's been a really interesting conversation, I think. We, we, we traveled all kinds of different roads. We really did. If you are experiencing anxiety, depression, fear, confusion, divisiveness, chaos, if your relationships have been impacted lately by the culture war that's been happening, needing to be right, making others wrong, if all of this is getting to you, that's what we've been talking about. Absolutely. We ask the question, what's happening right now? Why is it happening? What's creating the circumstances that we're living in? But as usual, we also talk about what we can do about it. We talk about energy management. We talk about the transformation process. And we give some tips and some ideas on some things that you might do to be able to navigate it a little bit more easily. And there's even a couple of parables within this one. Lots of good takeaways here. We hope that you enjoy the podcast and enjoy the bloopers at the end of the reel as well. It's been a while since we've had those. It's been a while since we can laugh. (laughs) Nice to laugh again. It is. Enjoy the podcast, everybody. Hello, everybody, and welcome back. I'm Angel Carlton. And I'm Alicia Rice. And we are Chicks Talking Shift. Yes, it is so good to be back. It's video. been a, on so video. Oh, video. yes, we've been on podcast on the podcast platforms, but we haven't done a video for a really long time. So I'm so excited to be here. This is so exciting. It's so great to see you. Well, I'm finally set up in a, a recording space here in Southwest Florida. It's been, what, three months since we yes. recorded our last one. My little studio slash office is really taking shape and it'll start to change and evolve as we keep going here. But that's exciting. Yes, absolutely. And I love the color of the walls. Oh, thank you. The salmon. Yes. We have a yes. painting party in here. So did yeah. you, and you know what, Angel, your shadow is showing. Yes, I know. My shadow is with me everywhere. I freaking go. I can't get rid of the damn bitch. No. <laughs> no, she's, she's cool. She's pretty cool. She shows me stuff about myself. I didn't even know existed. And often didn't want to know. Yeah. Don't let her get away. Don't let her get away. To be on the podcast. She wants to be seen. (laughs) This is my podcast. Okay. (laughs) I'll let you know when you can show up. Not today. I'm in spotlight here. Stay back there. Oh my goodness. You're crazy. You're crazy. I'm losing it. I, I think I really am. I think I think we all are. I think the world is losing its mind. <laughs> <laughs> and which is really the topic of our show today. Yeah. The topic of our conversation that we've been having for gosh, several months. It's about the shift. It's about the change. It's about the transformation that we're going through. It's about how our culture is changing. I mean, that's really the shift. We can call it culture. You can call it so many things, but it's, it's, it's the global culture. It's the American culture. It's culture in your, in the workplace with people working at home. I mean, everything, a culture is changing across the board. And we've been talking about this culture war that's happening and I, I looked it up on Wikipedia because I really feel like this is, this is what's happening today. There is a culture war everywhere we go. And Wikipedia describes it as a cultural conflict between social groups and the struggle for dominance of their values, beliefs, and practices. 
it's, it commonly refers to topics on which there's a general societal disagreement. Well, there's a hell of a lot of that going on right now. <laughs> you think? <laughs> oh gosh. Wow. Like, what are some examples? What comes to mind? It's everything. You know, it's, I think in that particular um, definition, I think they talked about racism, transgender rights, political, talk about virus, vaccines, medications, politics. Yes. I mean, whether you're vaccinated or not vaccinated, who's right, who's wrong, uh, that, that, that is what's on top of mind of, of everybody right now. But I know you've re- you've done some writing on cultural wars. Uh, you do a lot of writing on your social media platforms. And how would you best describe it? Since the pandemic started, you know, I did a lot more watching the screen than I've ever done in my life. And so I ran across this channel called Rebel Wisdom that I really vibe with because the things that they're talking about is that, I think they call it a liminal space, kind of that in between space that isn't this or that it's in between tribes on some level I started watching them and early last year is when I started really becoming aware of much more deeply about what's going on with this culture war and they did they have a uh, they they have a YouTube channel uh, it's Rebel Wisdom and there's a guy on there named Peter Lindbergh who I really like he did a video, it's about half hour or so, it's called Culture Wars 2.0. And he outlines it in a whole lot of different ways to kind of show you what those polarities are. You know, in spiritual speak, when we talk about, you know, I always say trenches, the divide, the, the extreme ends of the spectrum. Well, from a spiritual perspective, that's the polarity. So that's part of what we're dealing with. As these polarities shift, you know, I've it's one of the things that I thought about here recently was in the spiritual world and the metaphysical world and the indigenous world, a lot of times they've talked about pole shifts and they've talked about earth changes. And traditionally what the pole shift was supposed to mean is that the North and the South pole shift on their axis and it changes the weather pattern and all those different things. And so that was always the thing that I'd be running into over the years as I was studying things. But recently I started thinking about Well, what if it was that? But what if it was also other kinds of polarity shifts? And I started thinking about what's going on with us in our belief systems and our division and sitting in generally a this or that space when I've been sitting, trying my best to sit in an in-between space, which means this and that. Two things, two seemingly opposing things can be true at the same time. I think there's a lot of polarity shifts as the the left and right rub together, the not the religious, the non-religious, male, female, progress, progressive and traditional. And if you're somebody like myself that traditionally kind of lives more in the center or maybe flows between both spectrums, those people I think on a certain level have it the worst because the ones that are in the trenches believe they know what they know and they're shooting over the bow to the other side to the enemy. But when you're, when you're in the center of those and you lean either way, the other side and then both sides end up attacking you because they don't like your more nuanced perspective. So it's creating, I think, a bit of a tension, this culture war thing, definitely culturally and globally, we're seeing that. But I think it's also creating something internal that's causing a lot of anxiety and depression because they've got this tension and don't quite know what to do with it. And a lot of people are drinking it, drugging it away, stressing themselves out, being anxious. And I think this has put us in a really unhealthy place. And so we kind of wanted to talk about that environment and see what we could excavate to bring up to the surface to our awareness that we can kind of carry out the conversation to hold on to as we try to navigate all this. We have some ideas of our own that have worked as tools for how to get through this where you're not sacrificing relationships and friendships and you're keeping things pretty balanced in your life and uh, minimizing that stress and anxiety that you're talking about. Steve McIntosh, I'm reading this book. It's called The Presence of the Infinite, The Spiritual Experience of Beauty, Truth, and Goodness. 
And he talks a little bit about culture wars in here mm. and said exactly what, what you were just saying about there's the traditionalists, the modernists, and then there's the postmodernist. Yes. That's, and there's the 20% of the postmodernists. Those are the ones in the trenches, pioneering through the eras, if you will, but also uh, in, a, in a higher consciousness way mm. of thinking, in a, in a more progressive way of thinking. So that's about... 20% of society. No, I agree. When I was taking notes earlier, I, I wrote down agnostic. Being in the center, it's not that I don't know how I feel and what I believe. It's just that I'm fluid and open to take in other considerations to see how that changes my point of view. Agnostic, it doesn't really land on either end of the spectrum. Usually they're centrist. But the, the definition of agnostic is a person who's unwilling to commit to an opinion about something. And so I thought, okay, that's good. But then what I would add, my emphasis would be a person who's, willing to, who's unwilling to commit to an opinion about something because they're unsure or they don't know. And that's part of the place I think that we're lacking right now is there's not enough people saying, I don't know. There's I, not I enough. It's just not important to some people. Well, I think that's true too. Uh, that's, that's, I think where I stand. It, yeah. It's, it's like, you know, a, a seesaw, you know, the, the, at, at the playground when you're kids and you've got a friend on either side of the seesaw. Well, imagine being the person just standing in the center and yes. Balance between the two friends going yes. up, and down, up and down. Yeah. Balance. And I see what this friend sees and I see what that friend sees. I, I just see it. I observe it. Yeah. Um, I'm able to understand both and be yes. centered in that way. I don't want to label it as being right or wrong. No, nope. no. Nope. If you don't know what you believe or don't have enough information on what you believe, I think it is good to gather information mm -hmm. from, from both sides. And then you can base your own opinion on one side or the other. But yeah. If it were only that simple, Angel, <laughs> that was back in the olden days. <laughs> yes, the olden days. <laughs> olden days when you thought you had trust. <laughs> When you thought you had trusted sources and resources and all of that has flipped over on your ear. I don't know about you, but I've got people that I've been following for 15 years and really respected the, the information that I got from them. Could be spiritually, could be medically, could be, you know, health wise, could be anything. And then all of a sudden, I've seen so many people go through such severe changes. And these days, you can find the same level experts, the top level experts in any particular field. And that doesn't mean that they agree. And so I love that seesaw analogy, because you talk about a place where you're going to have the most balance. And it is, it's a balance between this and that. That's why I, that's why I run the spectrum and pay attention to what's going on on both sides. I'll play on both sides. I'll play in the middle, but yeah, yeah. It would be so much easier if, if at least right now we could, we could trust our sources and resources. Wow. And I don't know about you, but I've had several. We'll go back to the 1900s. <laughs> <laughs> and that seems so far away. Back in the 1900s when when we understood and trusted and believed. <laughs> well, I tell you what, it, there is so much change happening right now. And I think I saw on LinkedIn recently that CVS is now offering therapy for mental health. They're doing walk-in therapy sessions at CVS. I think Walmart is starting it, Walgreens, because... Huh our society is kind of breaking down and we don't know what exactly is happening here. What is happening to our world? What is happening to our lives? Yeah. What is happening? And if there's just so much change happening so quickly. And so learning to navigate the changes, learning to adapt to change is mm. going to be our greatest I want to say weapon. <laughs> it's going to be our greatest tool. It's going antidote. To it is, and it wouldn't hurt them at all 
to purchase the handbook dedicated to destiny, which tells you exactly how to navigate how to navigate that change. Thank you. For that's that. one of the things that's well, that's one of the things that I like the most about the book. It's just so packed with wisdom, but I really love the questions and the exercises that you could do at the end of the chapter to really drive home what you had highlighted in the chapter. It's like a roadmap. I'm not here to talk about that so much as as we are here to talk about what's really going on. What's really happening right now? Mm-hmm. I mean, in your opinion, when you look at what's happening, what do you what do you see? What's going on with you? Maybe we should just get personal. Talk about what's happening with with us. What's been happening with you personally? And and then we can talk about the worldview. <laughs> oh, here you go. The beach. Oh yes. It, How is the beach? That's right. Well, it the beach has always been my place for renewal, rejuvenation, connection, insight. And so I got the opportunity to go to the beach for a week. And that was so nice. But I was thoroughly taken by surprise that I ended up basically being a bitch at the beach. It was terrible. It was terrible. The beach is so calming. It was crazy. Not the whole time I wasn't that, but I noticed like the first day and a half I was, I was just so irritated inside. I'm like, Alicia, you're at the beach. You're, this is like your place. What's the problem? I was having problems presencing myself and, and connecting with the, the ocean and the sand. And it was just so unusual for me. So it started me on a self excavation process. And I felt, I'm like, what is that? And I felt like despair. And I felt alone. And I thought, and so I'm observing myself and I'm like, well, why would you feel alone? You're here with all the people that you haven't got to spend good time with. You're at your favorite place, your family. And these are the people that you love more than anything in the world. All I knew is that I wasn't, in a, I wasn't in personal alignment because I wasn't right inside. That kind of set me on a, a journey of excavation, both at the beach and it's continued since then to where I'm really trying to dig for what is that? What was that? Some of it's gone away. I've recognized what some of it is, but I'm still kind of digging into it. So I had an epiphany the other day. And so I'm going to share something with you. I'll be right back. Hang on. My pins and needles. Oh, look at you. Fun. Wow. So you went to the beach and crowned yourself, did you? <laughs> I think I, what I think happened is I think I was the queen bitch at the beach is what I think. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Yes. So let me tell you a little story. So I come home and I'm digging into everything. I'm back in the puzzle piece stage again. You you and I've talked about it. I think we've talked about it on podcasts, but it's when I take the picture of your life now and everything's in it. You got all these puzzle pieces. And then you purposefully take all of those individual pieces apart, all the elements of your life. And I always just picture myself with all these individual puzzle pieces laying around me. And then I pick up each puzzle piece and I ask myself questions about it. So What are, you know, what are you doing here? How do you feel about that? Why are you doing it? Are you doing it because you've just been doing it? Or are you doing it because you still feel passion? What wants to stay? What wants to go? What wants to be released? And so I've been going through that process. One of the things that I'm detecting is looking at my ability to bring my voice into the space about different things, not necessarily an opinion that this is what you need to believe. But just, hey, I've been thinking about this. I want to have easy conversations with people about some of the things that are going on, like you and I do, but not have to worry about a bunch of slings and arrows. But what I find is because people are so 
triggered so easily, this culture war thing, there are tribes and there are fractures even within the tribes themselves. Even though you're in that particular tribe, you're still picking people apart that are in that same tribe too. They're not this enough. They're not that enough. And so this, this constantly slings and arrows. And I keep talking about it being the fog of war right now while we're trying to figure out what's true, what's not. Everything's so foggy and, and it's hard to find your way to figure out what's true. And so I was thinking about bringing my voice to those things and, I, and realizing that I really don't feel very safe to do that because for the most part, I don't care what your belief is. I just want to have a conversation about what we're going through so we can all help each other through this together. And so what that realization did was it helped me realize that I was feeling tension inside by not bringing my, my voice to the table more. And so as I'm looking at that, I started going into judgment about myself. Well, are you a coward? Because courage, you know, since before our courage podcast, courage has been in me, that whole thought of courage. What is it? Who has it? What are examples of it? Where do I have it? Where do I not have it? Just paying attention to that. And so realized that this was creating a bit of an internal struggle for me. And so I was judging myself that I wasn't this and I wasn't that and why not and this and that and the other thing. And I started thinking about Alicia, who are you? Why are you here? Because that was part of the rub. I'm like, I'm a, I'm a way shower. I'm a light worker. How do I bring my light into the world? And I know that I do that in a lot of ways, but there's other ways that I'm not doing it because people are so trigger happy. And so as I started to really dig into that, I've always been the center person. I can, the center of the seesaw, that's always where I've been. I like taking it all in. I respect, you know, different people's opinions. You don't have to agree with me. And I've never been somebody to bash somebody else because of it. All of a sudden I realized, Alicia, you talk about the fog of war. You talk about how hazy things are. While everybody is shooting over the bow at other people, you're sitting trying to figure your own self out because I'm not going to be shooting slings and arrows at other people if I don't even know how I feel. And I'm trying to be thoughtful about my process. And so all of a sudden I realized, you know, maybe you haven't been doing anything wrong. Maybe you've been doing exactly as you're meant to do, regardless of what anybody else is, is doing. Because as the fog of war starts to clear, there's a lot of people that even though they think they know what they believe, they're still confused. If you've got your eyes open, you know, pieces aren't fitting together very good right now. There's a lot of things that aren't making a whole lot of sense and they're not, they're not really very linear and they're not fitting together to make sense of the story. You're right. They're not, some of them don't even know why they're doing it or why they believe, or where those beliefs even came from. Are they their true beliefs? I mean, we can trail off on that. I think we even talked about that. But what a great analogy, being in the middle of it, and people are just fighting. We're observing all of this happening at the same time. The fog of war, I love it. And so one of the things they talk about on Rebel Wisdom Enough is finding the signals in the noise. That's where I've been is really looking for what are the signals and what do I feel that I can trust while also challenging myself to be open-minded. So all of a sudden I had an epiphany that I'm doing and being exactly as I need to do and be. It's like I tell people, I have friends that are really into social justice and they're activists. And sometimes I see them bash other people that aren't doing the same thing. We are not all wired to be activists. We're not all wired for revolution. We're not all wired to be provocateurs. Some people are wired to play that front line, challenge the system, show everybody what's happening, break it down kind of thing. There's other people that are, it's kind of the meek will inherit the earth. And I'm not saying who's right and who's wrong. I'm just saying that there are other people that were brought here to simply love. They were supposed to be a human example of unconditional love or service to humanity or somebody that brings these new ideas to the poor and new adventures. We all got different 
ways of being. And so we're all not necessarily meant to be that. And so had this big epiphany that all of a sudden, whoosh, I felt my nervous system come into alignment because bottom line is what it was all about was me judging myself and not taking the time to sit and self-excavate. What is this building pressure that you're feeling? The next day, I had the most amazing experience after having that epiphany. My husband sent me a video that he thought that I would totally relate to. It's on a YouTube channel called Uncommon Practitioners. And the reason he sent it to me was the title. He watched a little bit of it. And when he got into it, he said, I sent it to you before I even watched the whole thing. It's how to dispute irrational beliefs without arguing. Because he knows that I'm trying to look for ways to have difficult conversations, but I'm not interested in the energy of arguing. So he sent me this video and I was so amazed when I started to watch it. So you Once upon a time, a beautiful princess sat at the edge of a clear, ornate pool in her palace grounds. Now, as she leaned over the pool to gaze at her reflection, her priceless bejeweled crown tumbled from her head and into the water with a loud splash. Now, at the sound of her all is lost scream, her royal attendants rushed to her from all sides in order to see what the problem was. And when they heard that her crown had fallen into the pool, they all frantically jumped one after the other into the pool themselves, thrashing about in search of the precious object. Now, of course, all this effort did nothing but churn the water and swirl up a lot of mud and rotten debris from the bottom of the pool. And all the while the princess was screaming and shouting and cursing um, at her attendants to find her precious crown. And of course the water grew incredibly murky and the crown disappeared from view completely. And the princess and her attendants were completely panicked. Now at this point, who should come upon the chaotic scene but the palace storyteller, a bent and bowed old man with twinkling eyes. And with one glance, he took in the chaos and rather than join the maelstrom and uh, jump into the pool with them, he sat calmly down at the princess's side and immediately launched into a riveting tale of times gone by. And his sonorous voice wove such a fascinating tapestry of love and adventure that the aides climbed out of the pool to sit down nearby and listen raptly. So that though they were hypnotized by this story. And the princess herself stopped shrieking and for a time forgot all about the lost crown. By the time the storyteller came to the end of the elaborate tale, everyone and everything, even the mud in the pool, had settled down. And so the storyteller reached into the pool once again still and clear, and easily plucked out the now plainly visible crown. Now, it's an interesting story, and it can be all too human to jump in too fast, to fish out the meaning behind something, including the story. Of, what do you think about that? I love that story. It is so perfect. It's exactly what's happening. We're all jumping in and murking up the water, and we can't, we can't see what we've lost. <laughs> So it's all about perspective. It's it's the wise one that sits back and observes and calms everybody down a little bit, gets back in that present moment, let the waters clear up, and then we'll be able to have some clarity instead of jumping in and creating all the chaos. That came the day after my epiphany. And so I'm sitting there watching it's playing out. It's my story. It's the fog of war, the murkiness in the water, the wait until the water clears so that we can have a conversation about what actually is instead of making it even worse. So I tip my crown to you, Missy. <laughs> <laughs> At least you, you didn't lose it for, for good. <laughs> well, what 
what I loved about it is I loved the sequencing of it. It was a validation. It was an acknowledgement of what I had excavated the day before. And so from my perspective, that's kind of how spirit works. It's like, okay, girlfriend, you got it. It's one of those little God winks, you know? Yes, yes. And it puts you at ease because we do spend time comparing ourselves and seeing what other people are doing. And so we just have to be our own leader right now. Yeah, it's it's not an easy time to be a leader <laughs> at all. Wow, you have had quite a journey, but I would say that the bitch at the beach paid off a little bit. The, the little, you know, the triggers that were happening to that caused you to be a bitch for a couple of days. You did a great job with the self excavation. It's exactly what we should all be doing. I was kind of going through this uh, similar thing while you were a bitch at the beach. I was a sick bitch. Oh. <laughs> sick bitch. I mean, I had COVID and pneumonia in the whole nine yards. Yes. And so I was missing you dearly. <laughs> oh, Ooh, I tell you what, I, I too was going through some uh, turbulence during that, it not only physically, thank goodness, uh, I'm okay. And some similar things that I was going through that you just described perfectly. I, I kind of feel muzzled. I'm muzzling myself. I'm looking at social media, uh -huh. sharing as much. And then it's yeah. like, well, where, where is that coming from? Yes. Is yeah. that coming from fear? Mm -hmm. Fear of what people think of being ridiculed, not ha uh, being accepted into the tribe, approval, all those things. Or is it love, like you said, because those are the two human motivators, basic spiritual principles right there, love and fear. What is driving you? What I gave my per myself permission to do was just, it's okay to be the observer. It's okay to be on the center. Yes. Of the it's okay yes. to lay back and not have an opinion about anything just yeah. observe see what's happening on all sides even with the vaccine for example people ask my my opinion of the vaccine yeah. I'm not sure what to believe I'm not sure what the truth is so I am not going to make a decision until I'm comfortable with a knowing of what the truth is uh, about any of this stuff happening with COVID, but I did give myself permission to be okay with just observing and just being in neutral, staying in neutral, staying in that place where I don't have to do anything right now. Because so many people on Facebook, like I haven't seen friends on Facebook in months and months and months. It's like, well, I get it. <laughs> I totally yeah. get it. Depending on who you're friends with, you, the news feeds can be really difficult. I have a friend that got off Facebook a few years ago. She couldn't stand the environment just for mental health. She needed to get off. And, and recently she decided to come back on, but she started a whole new account. And she says, I am very mindfully discerning who I want to bring into my social media space because she knows she wants peace and she wants it and needs it to be a certain way. And I think a lot, a lot of us would be well served. If it's running interference with your mental health, mute them, snooze them for 30 days, do whatever you need to do to have it so that you're not, they're not in front of you. So your nervous system can, you know, take a rest and just be chill and calm down because that stuff keeps us inflamed. It is, it's part of the energy management process is, it is. our allies Align the allies, align the people in your life that mm. serve your highest good. I'm not saying you have to discard the people who you love. And in, in my book, I bring it up again. I create a relationship quadrant. Mm -hmm. Who is significant? Who is insignificant in your life? Yeah. Who is a productive relationship? Meaning they, they do support and serve. A purpose in, in your life and who is an unproductive relationship. And there's these four quadrants to look at all the people in your life and find a place to put them. It's, it's not bad, not good. Just knowing that this person has significance and they're also, it's a productive relationship in helping me grow, evolve, 
and become a better version of myself somehow. They're a positive reflection. So you ask yourself, who makes you smile? Who makes you feel empowered? Who energizes you after talking to them? Mm -hmm. Those are the people that to align yourself with. The Mm -hmm. people that are bringing you down or making you feel less than or that strip your power and make you feel confused when you leave there and less just thinking less about yourself that that's where you just have to find a place put that relationship in a quadrant (laughs) and focus on the other ones the ones that are are serving you but aligning your your people is really important right now a couple of phrases have come to me recently one is that good fences make good neighbors but social media has t- torn down all the fences and now we can see everything. Another one was someone said that distance creates respect. Social media is right up in your face and it's some of the most personal stuff um, that we can imagine and a whole heck of a lot of opinion. And so there's a thing in psychology called dissimilarity cascades. And somebody else, I heard them call it, they, they called it environmental spoiling. And it's a concept that that's about once you dislike something about someone, it starts to spoil your whole perspective about them. Mm -hmm. And I think that's one of the things that's happened on social media. We know far more about our friends, neighbors, and coworkers than we've ever known. And we've got so many things that all it takes is just that spoilage to start. And it doesn't take very long for it just to all turn rotten to where we just really judging it and find it disdainful. I think we'd be better off if we had a little bit more distance at this point. We don't need to know the micro thoughts that each of us are having or the strong opinions. We don't need to know all those things. It's causing division between us. It definitely is. It's exactly what's happening. The quadrants. That's a great exercise. Because then you can just put it there and you can see, you can see what you need, almost like the quadrants or boundaries. That's excellent. You're creating your own algorithm. <laughs> <laughs> who, you, who you want to show up in your life feed, <laughs> right? Yeah. Well, don't let the algorithms tell you who you are. Yeah. Social dilemma, really disturbing. Yes. And that's a big part of what's happening as well. We're being fed and uh, that's, that's pretty scary. Bringing that up, it made me think of years ago, I was talking to a girlfriend that was listening to a lot of the same content all the time. And I said, this has kind of brought something up for me. So if you listen to the same kind of things all the time, is there a chance that you could be accidentally indoctrinated in whatever that particular frame of mind was? And it's kind of the bubble thing, right? Being in the bubble. And, or in the echo chamber, as some people call it. And that's something that has played through my mind a lot because since talking to her about that, since seeing Social Dilemma, I'm much more mindful of what's popping up in my feed or in suggestions on YouTube for videos. And it is really easy for those algorithms to take you down rabbit holes because you're interested in a particular subject matter at, the, at a certain time. And then all of a sudden, that's all that starts showing up as options, as, you know, as suggestions. Yeah. And because you're interested, you keep doing it. And before you know it, you've filtered out any other opposing perspective and are really super convinced that this is the only thing that can possibly be. It validates so, it. Yeah. It does validate it. And so that's been an interesting accidental indoctrination. And I think the algorithms can definitely do that to us. And we don't even consciously realize that it's happening. In The Social Dilemma, the movie, the documentary rather, but they're talking about it creating such a divide that it could lead to civil, civil war and cause all this divisiveness. And so let's talk about what we can do to rise above that. Mm-hmm. How do we overcome all of this? The culture wars that's happening, the algorithms that are feeding our brains with what they believe we want to learn and validate and what's what's keeping us, keeping the divisiveness between us. 
you talk about energy management. Tell us a little bit about what energy management is. I'm sure somebody's got a super eloquent definition for energy management. For me, more than anything, it's just, it's being aware of how you feel and how you're responding and what you're thinking in relationship to the world around you. And so for me, energy management is paying attention to how things land in me. Do they irritate me? Do they make me feel good? If it irritates me, then kind of digging into that as to why, instead of the more traditional unconscious way of responding is that irritates me. So you did something wrong. And so then I'm going to attack you or name call or whatever. Well, from a consciousness perspective and from a higher spiritual perspective, it's about noticing. It's about standing in presence and paying attention to what we're feeling and thinking at any particular time. And then the things where we're triggered or that that don't feel comfortable working with that energy to figure out how we can calm ourselves instead of making it about the outside. Look, people are going to post and say and accuse and name call all day long, and there's nothing we can do about it. But managing our energy is pulling back from those things and sitting more in neutral and saying, huh, well, look at what they said. Look at what, is there any truth in that? And self-excavating is, if, if there is truth, is there something that I need to change? Or is that making me feel bad or less than or weird or whatever inside? And digging deeper into that. It's learning how to respond in a more compassionate, at least neutral perspective that doesn't end up creating a sword fight of who's right and, and who's wrong. And so hopefully... The, the positive part of energy management is recognizing what's going on in your inner world, but also taking the high road when you do get in situations, really trying your best to reach up a little bit higher than what your normal response would be. Do you refer to a lot of emotions? You refer to feeling irritated and yes. a certain way. Yes. So energy management and emotional response, I mean, I really want one in the same What occurred to me while you were talking was the emotions are an expression of the energy because if you're angry, that is a high vibration energy. If you're sad or feeling victimized, that's a low vibrational energy. Managing the emotions also helps you manage the energy. Beautiful way to say it. So basically it's learning to maintain not just the emotional but also the mental, the thought process. And so learning to maintain more emotional and mental flexibility to where you're not as easily triggered. It's like, you just notice, it's like, oh, that's what they think. Oh, that's what they think. And not necessarily having anything to do with you. And most importantly, recognizing fear. What did you just say earlier? Everything either boils down to love or fear. So if it's not love, then it's got to be fear. So if you're threatened by someone else's opinion or what they believe, the trigger comes from fear because there's something about their way they're thinking that you don't necessarily want to be that and do that and live that way. And so it triggers fear. So then you want to attack it to make it go away. That is recognizing the fear because ultimately that's the reason, that's the base reason for the trigger. It is. There's a lot of fear going on right now. I think that's the the state that uh, many of us are operating in. That's why there's so much stress and anxiety because of the fear of the unknown. I mean, that's, that's the shift. Again, having the awareness around the fear, the energy of fear, which can be debilitating. It can, the energy can just be paralyzing, which most of us are muzzling, self-muzzling because of fear. I mean, it's exactly what's happening. Well, and the fear creates anxiety and depression. And so that's one of the reasons that we need to be aware of it, because if we don't become aware of it, it's going to continue to be unbalanced. It's going to build and it's going to get worse, which makes us more imbalanced, makes us more unhappy, makes us more anxious, makes us more depressed. We can't shove it in the closet. You know, a lot of us are medicating it away. 
you know, when you've got anxiety and depression, and I'm not a psychologist, there's a bazillion reasons that things go wrong in your mental and emotional makeup. But one of the reasons is because we're not living in alignment. What we're doing and what we're saying are two different things. And so we are divided within our own selves, let alone from people outside of us. When you start practicing these kind of things, this awareness, this presence of, oh, isn't that interesting? That really kind of triggered me. Why did that trigger me? And looking at that and neutralizing it, then hopefully trying to take a higher road of, okay, I understand that now. So now that emotion has bled away. And I'm not feeling as up in myself before I had some energy up in me, but now it's like, oh, okay, I see that. And so what's taking the higher road? Part of it is asking, what would love do now? What is love saying now? Yeah, choosing love over fear. It's it's easier said than done. It is, but it's a practice, right? You, you at least point yourself in the direction. It's kind of like sex. <laughs> With sex, the more you have, the more you want, the less you have, the less you want. It's kind of doing that. The more you practice, the better you'll get, the stronger that muscle will get. But if you don't practice, then you're just kind of left with what the muck I'm going to practice because I want some silver linings out of this muck. It goes dormant when you don't love and practice love and choose a loving response. Yes, it will go dormant. And because we are just being fed so much fear, fear is winning right now. (laughs) We really have to go out of our way to practice love. It is not an easy thing that we're just able to tap into. And it is certainly the higher road, but it is something we have to be consciously aware of. We recognize fear, then choose what would love do. Great question. I know what the shadow would do. <laughs> She's yeah. not always the, the best companion to have around because she wants to go run and hide. But love wants to understand. Love wants to ask questions. Love is curious. Mm-hmm. Love wants to learn. Love wants to absorb, understand who you are, where you're coming from. What is that thought process? Tell me more. Where did you get this information? Who shared that with you? Who told you this? I need to know. I want to know because of love, not because of of fear. And it's asking those open-ended questions, how we resolve conflict. Yes. Having enough love in ourselves to love ourselves enough and love the person that we're talking to. I don't care if it's a friend, a family, a stranger on the street who disagrees. Yeah. Ask an open-ended question to hey, help me understand, why is this so important to you? Yes. I don't feel that passion about it the same way. I just want to learn why it's so important to you. Help me understand that because we're all connected. We are all one here by understanding the next person. We understand a little bit about who we are as a human being as well. That's really the key. One of the greatest keys to resolving the conflict and and bridging the gap of the divide that's happening. That was beautiful, Angel. What came up for me when you were when you were saying that was that trying to understand someone is an act of love. It is an act of love. It's caring, compassion, it's empathy. Because fear is the divisiveness. Fear is the separation. Fear is, I don't want to be around that person. I don't like what they said. I don't like what they believe. I don't believe what they believe. And rather than understanding it. Yeah. 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 It's interesting because you've, you know, run into it over the years where they say people can see a car accident and you can have eight people see a car accident and they're all going to report something different. We all see something different from the same thing that's happening. And so does that mean all the other isn't true because they tell a different story than you do? No, that's part of it, right? Is learning how to acknowledge that other perspectives can be true at the same time. So this reminds me of a story that I've always loved. 
it's called the blind men and elephant. It's kind of a parable thing. There were, I'm a terrible story, storyteller, but you'll get the gist of it. Um, there were like these several blind men. Until and now. huh? Until now. Until now. <laughs> <laughs> well, let me put on my storytelling voice. <laughs> you are now a storyteller. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just gonna tell you what I can, I'll tell you what I can remember of it. Which I um, like magic wand. Oh, so do I. It would be so much better. <laughs> Until now is like a magic wand. It is like a magic wand. It is. It is. It's stop like fairy of, dust. Stop those self-sabotaging thoughts and words. Yeah. Follow it up with until now. Until now. Okay. I always love it when you do that. It, it It's magic. Every time you bring that into the space, it's like magic. It is for me. It might not work that that way for a hundred percent of the people, but for me, it's it's total magic. I love it. I love. Watch where you point that thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I want to hear about the elephants. Okay. So there were like these blind men, oh. and they and they came upon an elephant, and so each one of them encounters the elephant in a different way. So one guy comes upon his like his belly, the side of the elephant. And he's reaching around and he's feeling it. And he's like, oh, this is definitely a wall because it was just so big. The next one has the elephant's tusk. And he's like, oh, this isn't a wall. This is a spear. The next one has his trunk in his hands. And he's like, oh my gosh, no, it's neither one of those. It's a snake. And the fourth one touches his ears and he says it is a fan this is a fan and so all of these blind men are arguing everybody with his own opinion standing absolutely certain in what they're saying but each was right and each was wrong and i've always loved that story because just because someone's telling it differently doesn't mean that they're not also correct. And so I think that's part of energy management, right? I think about the blind men and the elephant, and I think they've got a different story. They've got a different story. I think that we might have often have several different parts of the elephant and we don't even realize it. Mm. And it can be true. All can be true at the same time and also false at the same time. Yes, that is what's happening. I mean, yes. depending on what news channel you watch, what social media you're tapped into, yes. who your friends are, who you're aligning with, that that is the different parts of the elephant that we're all seeing right now. We're all kind of blind. And we're all blindfolded right now. Take off the blindfolds and see all the perspective. Walk around the elephant, see what everybody is seeing and, and why they're seeing what they're seeing. That's the point where we're at right now. Because if we don't do that, we're, we're going to create more of this. Well, maybe it's the 20% of the intentionally enlightened beings on the planet, the progressive thinking people that are walking the planet that have intention on raising the vibes. That is not an easy thing to do right now. It's why we're here. We're going through this confusion ourselves, experiencing the humanness of it. We're also going through the transformation process ourselves and trying to change it by rising above some of the chaos and confusion. That is the first stage of transformation in realizing, is it really worth getting involved with? As yeah. an enlightened being, is it me wanting to make them wrong or is it me needing to be right? Yeah. Where is the motivation coming from? Or is it casting perspective? It's discernment. It's being aware of what you're putting out in the world and why. So it's be mm. discerning. Yes, exactly. So at some point after you realize where it's coming from, whether you want to get involved, take that higher road. The next stage of transformation is release. Let it go. Yes. Take a deep breath. Don't respond. It's like sending that really angry email. <laughs> and and just not hitting that send button till the next morning, chances are you won't send it. Yeah. Because the emotions settle down. Just let it go. If you're emotionally triggered, don't post what you think you should post. 
Mm -hmm. Salvage that relationship. Yes. That friendship. It's not worth it. It's not worth it over an opinion. Road rage. I mean, when I see people driving like complete idiots that can be putting everybody else into danger around them, and I send them love and protection instead of going into that fear, I choose to send them love. Just let it go. Right? That's the difference between love and fear. Absolutely. That's excellent. And the next stage is rebound, getting present. You talk about it all the time. Mm -hmm. Just take a deep breath and acknowledging. Maybe pat yourself on the back for not feeding the fuel of an argument. Mm -hmm. It's not necessary. Reinventing right now. As, As we focus on our actions, and I think it's really important that we start asking ourselves, who are we becoming right now? Mm. Who am I becoming? Am I becoming fear or am I becoming love? Because we are reinventing ourselves as, as a humanity. That is the shift. Once we do rise above the chaos, the confusion, then we become those role models. You talked about it earlier. Demonstrate for others another way of being. Demonstrate that curiosity. Demonstrate courage. Demonstrate the authenticity that you shared earlier of having that irritability and wanting to know where it was coming from and showing people how to do that rather than letting that emotional response take over. That's resurrecting to our higher selves. And then, of course, anytime you go through this type of transformation process, you have a responsibility to respond and help somebody else because there's a lot of struggling people out there in the world. I mean, when when you can walk into the corner drugstore and get mental health therapy, that's saying something about the state of society. I think we can all do our part to lift another human being up somehow. I think it goes back to what you do all the time, and that is take learning into your own hands, contribute your gifts because it is time. And even if you've been sitting on the sidelines and waiting, and we're all kind of feeling like we're waiting for something to happen for our turn, we're here to tell you it's time. So join the vibe tribe. (laughs) with us. Come on, we can do this together. (laughs) Yeah. Kind of reminds me of electric car. We need places to go plug in to refuel. Oh my gosh. Yes. Yes, we do. And and to get perspective and just have a place where you can come and feel supported. Yeah. Definitely come join us in the vibe tribe and we're going to be chatting on clubhouse. So if you haven't heard of clubhouse, it's a great audio social media app where it's an app that you download. It's free. It's like a phone app to where you just join people in conversation. And so Chicks Talking Shift is getting ready to start a club on Clubhouse. And we're going to start having some live chats. So we'd love it if you download the app and search out Angel Carlton and Alicia Rice. Follow us there. And then you'll be plugged in and you'll be able to come chat with us because This is our kind of social media, to be able to chat and to finally connect with your voice and your energy. It's going to be fabulous. So download that Clubhouse app and uh, watch our pages as to when we're going to be having our next chat. Clubhouse works uh, in conjunction with Twitter and Instagram. So Chicks Talking Shift also has an Instagram page. Come join us over there. Yeah, new stuff. It's That's going to be so much fun. I'm so excited. I am really excited about that platform. Yeah, me too. People can share their opinions about how the shift is impacting their lives and how they're getting through change. We can learn from each other. We do want to learn from you as well. So we look forward to the interaction. We cannot wait. And if you love podcasts, check out Chicks Talking Shift on your favorite podcast channel too. Thank you so much for joining our conversation today. This was fun. Wow, this was very fun. If you like what you hear, let us know. I mean, 
The only way we know if we're making an impact is if you leave a review or a rating. Mm -hmm. So that really helps us. I'd like to hear from more people how they like receiving the podcast. Do you, do you prefer it in video format? Do you prefer just to listen so you can be on the, on the go with it? So if you'll just shoot us an email at chickstalkingshift at gmail.com. Well, until next time. Until just, next time. Uh, be your best self and keep smiling. That's, that's <laughs> all we can do. Keep raising the vibes, guys. The world needs your good, good energy. Till next time. Bye. Okay. Bye. It's taken us this long. <laughs> wow. That's how long it's taken me to get. It is. Look at everything that you've been doing. Space. Yes. You haven't had a recording space in a long time. I know. I know. Yeah. It's uh, this is pretty cool to be back. <laughs> it is. It is. Oh, <laughs> how fun. In my Halo Studios. Halo. <laughs> My new studio is down here in Southwest Florida. <laughs> yes. If you could see the makeshift set I have here, it's, it's hilarious. You're too sophisticated for me, sis. <laughs> sophisticated. <laughs> oh, yeah. You should see the foam I have up here from Home Depot. It's, yeah, it's great. What'd you say? Did you say Foam Depot? Foam Depot. <laughs> from, from, from Home Depot. I'm like, Home Depot? That must be big city stuff. <laughs> out in the country, they just have the Home Depot, don't they? Yes, they do. <laughs> Oh, that's so funny. Foam Depot. Oh, that cracks me up. Yeah. All right. Funny. Let's have a little <sighs> meditation. Get centered. Bring us to together. The chicks are back. The chicks are back. Okay. Take a deep breath. <sighs> especially through this conversation. Bless the world, bless us both and shine your light on us. <laughs> Sweet. I don't know, I gotta stop somewhere. Okay. Stop somewhere. <laughs> Namaste. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's so funny. <laughs> I gotta stop somewhere. I could ask all day for favors. Come on, God. Oh, God. Help me here. Help me there. Guide me there. Tell me this. Tell me that. Be clear. <laughs> <laughs> the imperfect human. <laughs> like, where do I stop? <laughs> There's no end to it. <laughs> That's what's so funny about the journey, right? We keep thinking, ooh, I made it. <laughs> it's like there's no making it. <laughs> no. It's a journey. It doesn't end. <laughs> I've got my shadow always showing up. Like, keep her in check. I see you. I see you. You can't hide from me. Turn around. See if you can see it. <laughs> I do. <laughs> you get back there where you belong. Yes, exactly. In the back seat. <laughs> get in the back seat. I see you. I'm not, I'm not putting you in the trunk where I can't see you. I'm putting you in the back seat where I got my eye on you. I know you're there, <laughs> but you ain't driving the vehicle. <laughs> oh my God, was that a Florida alligator? <laughs> oh, yes. Oh, help us. That's uh, funny. What is the shift done to us? <laughs> it's not done yet. It's not done yet. <laughs> Hate to say it. You know what? And I really do believe 
people are losing their minds right now. <laughs> you think? Look at this. Exactly. <laughs> Perfect example of what's happening. Showing up. Studio <laughs> effects. Huh. I don't understand. Mustache and beard. No. <laughs> well, I don't know. That might be good. <laughs> I, it's, it's. Look at me. Oh, can you see me? Yeah. Can you see my mustache? Oh my God, that's terrible. Take that off, please. <laughs> Don't, I can't look at you like that, please. <laughs> oh goodness. Get rid of it. No. <laughs> oh, I have to go to none. Oh, there we go. Oh, that's disturbing. <laughs> Watch, I'll do something and then not be able to undo it. Oh my God. <laughs> Take it off, please. <laughs> Trying, hang on a minute. <laughs> I think I'm I put purple lipstick on, no lip color. I can't. Yeah. I don't think I have anything left. I think it's all gone now, isn't it? I yeah. think it is. Okay. Oh, that is weird. It, that was uh, well, it was. Um... <laughs> well, is it angel? Spit it out. <laughs> Come on. COVID brain. Damn. Oh, Where's your right shoulder? That. Yeah. So look at the fabric behind you. I see that. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Okay. None. Okay. So they must have. <laughs> Simon says, touch right shoulder. <laughs> where's your right shoulder, Lisa? Very good. Now, where's your nose? <laughs> you're lucky I'm not dyslexic. <laughs> well, especially when you're trying to do it, I'm trying to get it in the screen and get it all over my chest and. Yeah, you know, it's one thing if it's up here, but I'm trying yeah, to get I'm like, in a certain place. <laughs> <laughs> it was a halo, but now it's horns. <laughs> hey, you're traveling the spectrum, girlfriend. 